Hello, Wellness Warriors. Dr. Sean Medlin here. I am really, really excited to be bringing to you Joe Martino today. He's a local counselor. He's an authority in the community. He does talks all over. He is a wealth of information. We've had him talk at our Wellness Warriors event last year. I'm really excited to bring him on our Wellness Warriors series and be educating and talking to us about our state of mind and really evolving and changing and adapting better habits. I again want to remind you, we teach in the Wellness Warriors on the five pillars of health. So we call it living the dream, diet, rest, exercise, alignment, which is nervous system care, chiropractic care, and state of mind. That fifth one is what we're going to be talking about today, state of mind. That's what Joe is an expert in. So let's go ahead and talk to Joe here. All right. Hello, Joe Martino. Welcome to the Wellness Warriors interview series. Um, would you mind introducing yourself, please? Sure. My name's Joe. Uh, I own the Joe Martino Counseling Network. We have three offices, uh, one in Granville, one in Grand Rapids, and one in Lowell. That's awesome. Thank you for being on the show with us today. I am a big fan of yours. You've obviously contributed, contributed to a lot of the content that we've done in the past. You were one of our premier speakers at the Wellness Warriors uh, community event. And so thank you for being on today. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So this call was instigated by an article that I read called the neuroscience of change. So how to train your brain to create better habits. And I thought of you and how your expertise and how your um, opinion can really help the community. And so in your opinion, I would love to hear what you think about New Year's resolutions. So a lot of people, right, January, boom, comes, and everyone's trying to change their habits. We're, well, now we're half a year later, and maybe some people have kept uh, their habits, maybe they haven't, but I'd love to hear your opinion on that. So statistically speaking, less than 3% would have kept their habits okay. on average by now. So 97% failure rate. Uh, somewhere around 60% never make it past January 15th, wow. uh, which is insanity to me yeah. uh, because every year we do the same thing. Okay. Uh, I'm not a big fan, if you might tell by my quickness to get to those stats, uh, of, of New Year's resolutions. Um, I love goals, and I love setting target change behaviors. But the idea of New Year's resolutions, to be honest, seems pretty silly to me. If I came to you and said, Sean, I've got a great idea. It's got a 97% failure rate. You know, I don't think anybody would jump on board with that, but they do every year. Can <laughs> every you year. elaborate a little bit on what you just said with not just goals, but target. Can you repeat that target? Ah, uh, gee, what did I say? Target behaviors, target change. So yeah. goals that uh, goals that lead to targeted change. One of the things that we talk about a lot, or I talk about a lot with my clients, is that what we call the football of change. And so a lot of people will say, "Okay, I'm here, at point X, and I want to get here at point Y," but they don't ever add point Z, which is by when. And all they really have there is a desired outcome. What do you want? Well, it's a desired outcome. It's like saying, well, I want to lose weight. Well, that's a terrible goal. Like, like how much weight, right? Like, like why? Yeah. But if you have a desired outcome, then you have to ask yourself, what are the necessary behaviors that I need to do in order to get that desired outcome? And those good goals actually become, I'm going to do these necessary behaviors. Yeah. And then, so we kind of draw like a half moon above the first line. So that's how you get the top of the football. And then the bottom of the football would be like systematic changes. So if you want to lose weight, maybe you don't bring Oreos into your house, it, it, you know, that type of thing. If you find that uh, you struggle to eat breakfast, uh, maybe you do meal prepping so that it's ready to go, uh, you know, out the door in the morning, that type of thing. Uh, I'm a big fan of those types of changes, those types of goals. Very cool. So setting yourself up for success. Yes. Yep, One of these absolutely. Days, Joe, we're gonna have we're gonna have you whiteboarding for us. We're gonna get you going on the white. That'd be a fun time. That'd be a fun time. Special. So, uh, what are some of the habits you have personally been working on? Because we're always setting habits, and our own personal philosophies are always evolving. So, what are some of the sure. most powerful techniques that you've been employing to really fuel your good habits lately? 
So one of the things that I do is I'm constantly looking at my schedule. Uh, I own a couple businesses, uh, four kids, you know, always something. So I'm always looking at my schedule and my time. What am I doing with my time? Because the only thing I really control is my behaviors. So if I, I want to take uh, responsibility for my, my development and maybe how I invest my finances. So there's places online where you can sign up and buy courses and study them. So the problem is what's really interesting is a lot of people buy the courses and then they don't complete them because right. they don't create time to watch them, to do them. So I schedule that into my calendar. I, I use my calendar and I use Evernote to manage almost all of my goals. A couple of years ago, I decided I wanted to eat an apple a day, a hundred days in a row. And I wanted to go work out one time, a hundred days in a row. Now there was some, you know, active recoveries and those types of things. in there. Uh, and so the goal was a hundred days in a row. If I got to day 15 and I didn't do day 16, then I just started back at day one the next day. Right. Uh, and that actually happened twice. Uh, and I just yeah. kept that, I kept that down. Uh, I kept that on a sheet of paper and I kept it in an app on my phone where I would just check it off. One of the things that I think people struggle with uh, that I've worked really hard on is the idea of understanding what's the emotional payoff to me for the goal that I'm setting. Right. Because we're emotional beings. And so if we can understand, okay, this is what I want and my emotional goal, my emotional payoff is this, that helps us move forward, helps us re-engage the habit. Uh, the article that you referenced, one of the things that the article talks about is excitement. I think it says excitement. It might be say exuberance is, is common, but commitment's rare. Mm -hmm. And it's really, what can you do after the excite the excitement is worn off? That's usually where change happens, right? Change requires willpower, way power and stay power. Yep. W willpower is the want way power is How do you do it? And then stay power is Can you stay in that process? And that's usually where people fall off. So for me, I track it. I tell people about it because then they start asking like the hundred workouts. Uh, I would check in on Facebook at the gym yeah. and people would start questioning me like, Hey, what day are you on? I'm following you. You know, so that, prov that provides accountability yep. for me. So, so those types of things. That's awesome. I hope our listeners really pick that up and use that as an action step today is scheduling it in. And then also, I really loved how you said the emotional payoff. So being right. able to write that down, put that somewhere visible so that you can yes. constantly remind yourself about it, that emotional payoff because that will, and that leads to my next question because you're talking about the article and it talks about motivational waves. And so when you're riding a wave, that's awesome. But how do you motivate yourself when you're at the bottom of a wave? Well, so for me, uh, the Navy SEALs have a saying, you, you rarely rise to the occasion, you fall to your level of training. Mm -hmm. And training is just really a bunch of habits. So for me, I, I don't worry so much about what's my motivation beyond those emotional goals. And so today's activities aren't based on am I motivated to do them, because most days I probably won't be. It's based on are they scheduled? And if they are, I need to do them. So, so on Sunday, my, my schedule is somewhat set for me, certainly around clients and, you know, office meetings and those types of things. But then my free time, you know, I look at it and say, okay, uh, I'm going to work out Monday. I'm going to go to a coffee shop and write on Tuesdays, work out Wednesdays and Thursdays and play pickleball on Fridays. Okay. So then, well, what exercises am I going to do Monday? What exercises am I going to do Wednesday and Thursday? Uh, okay. Like tonight, when we're done here, I'm going to head home and do a, a boxing workout. Uh, because this morning I slept in and, and snuggled my son. So having that flexibility mm -hmm. is important as long as it doesn't interfere with like motivations. Motivation's almost worthless. I had to stop there for a second, <laughs> right? Like it's just really comes down to, to will you do what you say, you, what you know you need to do in order to get what you want. Right. So that emotional and, payoff. And, Correct. Yep. And so I think it was Tom Landry. He once said uh, that a, a coach's job is to get people to do, get men to do what they don't want to do to become what they want to become. Mm -hmm. And you have to coach yourself. Most of us, right? We, we're, we're not going to have Tom Landry or some other coach coaching us. 
And so the difference between winners and losers typically is winners do what the losers won't do in order to get what they both want in the end, not right in the immediate. Yes. So I kind of rambled there, but. No, I love it because you're talking about coaching and you're the father of four beautiful kiddos. And so you're raising a family and you're raising a bunch of um, people in your environment and your stimulation. And so what are the ways that you try to instill on your family and your kids a sense of motivation and um, developing good habits for their future? So when it comes to kids, you know, one of the things I think is just we are Kid, people learn by modeling. So my job is to model good behavior. Uh, my job is to model good habits, to show my kids the X to the Y to the Z, to kind of lay it out for them so they can see it. Uh, and, and then I, you know, my kids, my three older ones are old enough where we can have conversations about, well, who do you want to be? That's desired outcome. Okay. Well, what are you doing to achieve that? You know, how do you manage your resources? There's 1,141 minutes in every day. And that's it. You get those minutes and it's done. You just spent 68 of them, you know, playing Minecraft. How does that help you become who you want to be? And maybe it does. Maybe that's, well, you know what? I needed those 61 minutes to take a breather. Okay, awesome. Well, what are you doing, you know, with the next 60 minutes? So a lot of teaching. Teach, 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 and model. That's phenomenal. And really instilling them, instilling in them that there is resources and how you manage them. That's really, yes. really good because I don't think a lot of kids realize the fact that they can use tools to their advantage and they can really, yes, they're seeing you do it. And then you give them the tools and they're able to connect the two and move yes. forward. Yes. That's, Perfect. That's awesome. So I love your content. I love the value that you bring to this community. Can you tell me a little bit about your iTunes show? Sure. So very excited. We, about three months ago, we launched the Joe Martino show. It's a podcast that comes out every Tuesday, uh, dealing with all things that make us human. Uh, we did publish a book in February called the emotionally secure couple. So we talk about emotional security. We talk about parenting I try to make it a short show. So anywhere from 16 to 25 minutes is the goal. Try to catch people's commute. Sometimes we get out to about 30, uh, but you can find it in the iTunes store, or the Google play. Uh, it is just search the Joe Martino show. Um, and we just deal with all things human. We're actually talking this coming Tuesday, the episode that drops, I'm actually talking about what do you do in July with all of those goals or resolutions you made in January. Now you're not on the wagon. Uh, you know, what's a mid year reset look like? One of, one of the things that I'm passionate about, is what metrics are you using to measure your life? How will you know if you win at your life? And so we deal with that a lot in the show. Uh, they can find it. Any of your listeners can also find it at joemartino.com forward slash podcast. That's J-O-E-M-A-R-T-I-N-O forward slash podcast. And then from there, they can pick their player of choice to subscribe. That's awesome. Thank you. Because it's really all about that consistent um, – motivation and feeding into your goals it's not a one time and done there's no magic bullet and so it's constantly tying in to who you want to become and then small baby steps for getting there yes absolutely so thank you so for so much for being on today joe i appreciate you and uh have a fantastic afternoon thanks a lot sean i appreciate it you guys take care thank you bye 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 thank you joe so much for joining us in today's interview. That was just so rich with content and value. I hope that you can take some action steps with the material that we went over today and implement them ASAP. Today, tomorrow, write out those goals, make those changes. Um, and the number one thing that I think that's gonna help is finding that accountability buddy, finding that accountability partner that's gonna help you reach those goals. So thank you very much for tuning in today. Join our Wellness Warriors Facebook group. Share your goals, share your ideas, make a comment, um, like this video, and we'll continue to put out this great content and uh, valuable things for you to move forward to into 2018. This is your year, guys. Thank you very much. We appreciate you.